you say, help him, Jesus. Amen. And if you're enjoying it, tell your, tell your team to have some fresh air. <laughs> yeah, and preach it, brother. Preach That's it, what brother. you said. Let's just practice it now. Preach it, brother. <laughs> Come on, Peter. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Nelson. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Who liked that last song? Oh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you. We thank you, Lord, that this is your room. We thank you, Lord, that your word is all around us. On the walls of this room. We thank you, Father, that, that we are here this evening oh god and we're here hungry and thirsty we want to hear from you lord but some of us are just looking for a little bit of a, a guidance a direction father yeah. some of us are looking for some confirmation father some of us are looking for healing some of us are looking for a breakthrough oh god some of us are looking father god just to be lifted up yes. so lord god we come to you this evening because you are the god of your word yes. and your word yes. says that when your people praise you. You inhabit those praises. So, Father, we thank you that tonight, hallelujah, we welcome you in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. We have, a, we have an amazing God. We truly do. So, our message has changed. So, this must be for somebody. I love it when God speaks to me and he just says, you're thinking you're doing thing, one thing, and he just says, we're doing this. And I just thought, okay, like, great. Thank you, Jesus. We're looking in Joshua chapter 3. And it's, it's talking about crossing over. I, I don't know what comes to mind when you think of the, that phrase, crossing over. What, what comes to your mind? Is it that you might be uh, moving maybe from one job to another, crossing over into another uh, area of your life? Is it that uh, you're crossing over from, I don't know, you've overcome some sort of addiction? And you're crossing over. Or the guys in Elisha house, you may be moving from phase one to phase two. Or phase two to phase three. Or in other houses. You know, it can be many, many different, different things. But the one thing about crossing over is we need God yeah. to cross over with us. Amen? Yeah, really to prepare the way. And, and in this passage today, in Joshua chapter three, um, it's, where the, it's where the Israelites... They were going to cross over into the promised land. This, this part of crossing over that they are about to do is so huge in their history, in their walk with God, in their testimony. It's so huge in everything because they just spent 40 years in the wilderness. Who knows what it's like to spend time in the wilderness? And when we're in the wilderness... It's not a bad thing, is it, to cross over into some promised land, hallelujah. Amen? Amen. You could use this, like, if you're not born again, if you've never invited Jesus Christ into your life, if you've never surrendered and acknowledged that you, Father, I can't do this, I've made a mess of my life, I really need Jesus, I really need you to come in and help me. That's crossing over, that's crossing over from dark into light. That's what this image that we get today from Joshua chapter 3 is. Uh, speaks to us about. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites, and there were a lot of them, okay, there were a lot, they set out and they went to the Jordan, That's, this is the river, and they camped before crossing over. So first of all, they, they waited. They camped. Uh, who's been camping? Who you knows what it's like to go camping, yeah? When you, <laughs> when you find the place that you're finally going to put your tent, and then you set your tent. So it takes some time, doesn't it? You camp in that place. And, and it's good. And isn't it great when you get in your tent after you put it up? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's just, just like, you just want to lie there, don't you? And just like, oh, this feels so good. It felt like that. There was something about camping at this place next to the Jordan. Where they're there with Joshua. Who is the, the new appointed leader by God. And they knew that change was on the horizon. Hallelujah. Because they knew yes. that where they'd been brought to, that where they were going to go, is where they'd been wanting to go for the last 40 years. How long have you been waiting 
to cross over into the new life that God's got for you. How long? That's right. That's right. So it said they camped for three days. Yeah. And for three days it said the officers went throughout the camp, giving them orders, instructing them, telling them what's going to take place. And they said, listen, they said, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God, we have big G, hallelujah, yeah. and the Levitical priest, so the priest carrying it, then you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Yes. Follow it. <clears throat> and what that tells me is that you have to be ready to cross over. Yes. yes that's right. Are you ready? Because if you're not ready to cross over, when your time is ready for crossing over, yes. you might just struggle. You see, for three days, they, they come. Three days, they come. And for three days, they were told the same instruction. For three days. Listen, when you see the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant, this was like, it was like a, a box that, that had been made. It was like more than a box, but it was like a, well, an Ark. <laughs> it was a beautiful, beautiful created thing. And within, and within this represented the presence of God at this time for their lives. And so for three days, giving instructions, listening. You know, sometimes when we're going to cross over, and maybe particularly if you're struggling with any sort of addiction, whatever it might be, you just want to cross over and get out of it, don't you? Leave that behind. But you've got to, first of all, you've got to recognize where you've come from. The Israelites, for three days, they had this peace, and they recognized that they'd been in the wilderness for 40 years. They knew what it was like. They recognized that one generation had fallen away and passed away in the wilderness and that the, this new generation of believers to follow God were going to go across. And so for three days they, were, they, took, they took orders from the people, they took instructions and then it said you will know which way to go you'll know which way to go because you've never been there before. Yeah. Now that's a bit strange isn't it? You'll know where you're going because actually you've never been there before. Well, it doesn't make sense, does it? It says, but keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark and do not go near it. So let's back up. Verse 3. Giving orders to the people, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. So they got to follow it, okay? So they didn't know where they were going because they'd never been there, but they knew how to get there. Yes, they'd never been there before, but they knew where they were going because they knew they were following God. Do you see? And, and for us, we need to just spend some time and just ask God, God, are you in this? Is this where you want me to go? Is this what you want me to do? We have to ask God. It said, you'll know which way to go. You've never been there before. You'll know which way to go because you'll see the priest for carrying the ark and you have to follow it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves. Yes. Remember, right? They're going from a wilderness experience into a promised land. And that's like us in our walk today with God. We go, when I were born again, when I asked Jesus Christ into my life, before, I had no interest in God. I wasn't interested. I thought people who talked about God were a bit crackpot and they, were, they just lost their way. I thought, not, don't bother me with any of that stuff. That's how I was. I don't know if anybody else has been like that, but that's how I was. I thought, madness. And then, and then I crossed from that wilderness of chaos that I didn't really understand life into a promised land of all the promises that God promised me. All the promises where God wants him to take me. And God wants to take these people into the promised land. Consecrate yourself for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things amongst you. What does that mean, consecrate yourself? It means get yourself ready. It means examine yourself. Are you ready for this? 
Are you ready for this next move into the next level at Elisha House? Are you ready? Are you prepared? That's what it means. Are you ready? Are you prepared? And asking God and moving God. Moving with God. Joshua said, told the priests, he said, who carry the ark of the, promise, of the covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's water, go and stand in the river. Now the Jordan, it said, at this time was in full flood. The river's flowing like crazy. You know what a river looks like when it's in full flood. This is about crossing over. It's impossible. It can seem impossible, can't it, to cross over from a wilderness into a promised land. But with God, all things are possible. Yes. There's a river here now. And all this imagery and all this detail is for <laughs> us, for you and I, to understand that today, when we are crossing over from dark to light... When we are trying to overcome sins, whatever they might be, you know, whether it's drug addiction, alcohol, uh, pornography, can't stop swearing, can't stop stealing, can't stop getting angry, whatever it might be, that it seems impossible, I'll never, I'll never be able to stop getting angry. I'll never stop being impatient. And anxiousness, what about that? Or fear. I'm just like a, I'm just like a, a walking box of frogs. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. It's so anxious. I don't know where that image came from. <laughs> Hallelujah. I bet you haven't heard anybody else say that in a preach before, have you? <laughs> a walking box of frogs. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> as soon as the priest who carried the ark of the Lord set the foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and will stand in a heap. This is what God said. Now then, God's told them, it's now up to them to do it. Isn't it hard when God tells you to do something? Yeah. I, I don't want you to be angry all the time. But I can't help it. Well, I don't want you to do it. And that's how God speaks to us. It's how the Word speaks. I don't want you to do it. You but follow me and I'll show you how... I'll show you how. This is our God. So verse 15, here we go. It says, now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. And as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap and a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarathon. While the water flowing down to the Sea of the Araba that is, the Dead Sea was completely cut off. Imagine that for a miracle. You know, people say, um, well, actually, the scripture that comes to mind, the disciples were talking to Jesus and, uh, and it said that it is very difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples said, well, who then can be saved? And Jesus said, with, with man, you have no chance. But with God, all things are possible. Yes, oh, yes, All things are possible. Yes. And so whatever you are going through in your life, in your own strength, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen. Be encouraged. Yes. All things are possible. And so this is what happened. Then the priests who carried the ark of the, the covenant for the Lord, they stopped in the middle of the Jordan and they stood on dry ground until all Israel passed by. The whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Think about it very, very carefully. A river in full flood. That can be like life sometimes, can't it? Yeah. Isn't life a, a, a long and a ferocious rate? Yes. Anybody with me on that? Are you think yeah. that? I can't keep up with it, can you? It's like madness, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I, I nearly said it's nearly Christmas, but I didn't. Yeah. It's just flying along. Well, we're in August, aren't we? Nearly September and we're flying along and I'm just thinking, where's the, where's the year gone? It's like, and sometimes in that chaos of life, we, we forget just to make camp somewhere and pause. Yes, good point. Take a minute. Mm, Take a minute. Why don't you yes. just make camp at the side of your life? Well, I don't do that, Peter. Well, you just make yourself a cup of tea or coffee, if you like. And you take a breath and you find the Bible and you read it. One verse, two verses. And when you've read that verse, 
you close your eyes and you say a prayer and you say Lord will you just show me what you're saying in this verse will you speak to me will you speak to me and then you read it again and then read it again and if you're thinking well there's that many verses in the Bible do I just play like Chinese you know just open it in the middle and I'll read this one no it's that Matthew, Mark, Luke and John yeah okay those those four books they're about Jesus when Jesus was on the earth pretty pretty much they're about the things that Jesus said the things that Jesus did that's what they're about the experience that people had when he pulled people up when that's what Matthew Mark Luke and John are about if you wanted to go into Acts Acts is about what happened after Jesus has gone up to heaven and he sent the Holy Spirit so there's a there's been a crossing over we've crossed over where Jesus was with the disciples now Jesus has gone to heaven and now the disciples have to cross over into life without the physical Jesus but with the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the word and the voice of God and that is Acts and if you read the book of Acts read it in that way that this is what the first believers experienced of what God said he would do and when you read that you read them together and you start to get involved and get into the word your life will change and crossing over won't seem that difficult I can assure you because that's what the word of God does but as you read it find a verse say Lord just show me one verse and the Holy Spirit will do and one verse will stand out to you and it'll be the one that you need to to hear right at that moment listen what I'm telling you is absolutely true but unless you try it you will never know so that's up to you what God said to Joshua and, and the Israelites is that as soon as the priest set at the edge of a raging river flowing in full flood the water's going to stop hello that doesn't happen that's not going to happen in our thinking so how do you do that unless they did it it would never have stopped did you notice that yeah. they had to step into the what they had to step imagine if you were the first going thinking oh no I hope this works <laughs> like that <laughs> I told you I've got to tell you this story I'm not. <clears throat> you know we, we go, go to India some years ago I went to India and uh, it was 15 years ago and this was our first time I would be in my wife Donna and myself's first time to India and we went to tell um, the people about Jesus and pray for them and so we, we came to this meeting uh, yeah in this church church meeting and um, at the end of I shared a word probably not that great but I shared a word and at the end of the meeting I thought right I've got to pray for him now for healing and the person that I followed Suzanne she would call she used to say if anybody needs healing, put your hand up and yeah, yeah, people put their hand up. Right, put your hand where on your body where you need healing. So if it's your shoulder, put it on your shoulder. If it's your head, put it on your head, wherever it is. Put your hand on the part of the body that you want God to heal. And this is what she did, and she and she'd say, Okay, I'm gonna pray. And they'd do that. And she'd say, Lord Jesus, put your hand on my hand and will you heal me? Thank you very much. Amen. And people got healed. So as soon as I went there, it's my turn. I had to cross over. Yes. I had to cross over from watching somebody else do it to me do it. It's scary, crossing over. Yeah. That's Scott, he'll tell you. He shared a little bit, didn't you, Scott? Yeah, yeah. Last week. But it's a crossing over, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's scary. But God's with you. And you know when you did it, it was fine. Yeah. But before you do it, oh my goodness, it's <laughs> difficult. So it's my turn. So I'm thinking, right, I've got to pray who, who wants healing. So I stood there praying, I'm thinking, oh Lord, please show up, please show up. Lord, I hope somebody gets healed. And, and I prayed with my fingers crossed behind my back. I, not, I, I tell you that, I did, I prayed. And you know God's grace is so, is so good. It's so good. And I said, if you've anybody received healing, come forward. And this one woman came from, from the back and she came forward. And she said uh, she'd been healed of a thyroid problem. So uh, that was the only person that came, I think. So that was it, and I thought, well, that was a waste of time. Didn't work for me. That's what I thought. I'll be honest. I thought it didn't work. 
Anyway, I got home. One week later, I got a phone call from the pastor of the church in India. And, uh, and they were having a celebration meeting. I said, oh, what you celebrated? He said, the healing of the woman that came forward who had the thyroid problem. I said, why? What, did, what happened? He said, she suffered with thyroid for something like 15 plus years. And when she came forward, she knew she'd been healed, but she needed to go to the doctor to get all the tests done on her blood to make sure she was healing. And yesterday we got the test back. She's completely healed. There's no problem with her. And hallelujah, that was God. Yes. Now if God can do that with a guy who I believe, fingers crossed behind his back, <laughs> imagine what he can do with you. Yeah. If you'll just cross over. Yes, come on. If you'll just cross over from fear into confidence. Right. Imagine that, huh? From anxiety into strength. Imagine that. To cross over. From anger to peace. Hallelujah. Having the peace of God in our lives is so wonderful. And uh, I just want to finish with one last thing because this really spoke to me on Sunday. So I'm speaking on Sunday. And we're talking about David and Goliath. <clears throat> And we're talking about how David defeated Goliath. And he took five stones. And, uh, but he only used one stone. Yeah. And, and God showed us that, that David took, that God used David with one stone and one sling. David had to get his, swing, his sling going and hurl the stone. But as the stone went through the air, it was carried by the presence of God. And this stone hit Goliath, sprang right in the forehead, and that it, it killed him. And I, and I said, what Goliath have you got in your life that you need God to take care of? What Goliath? And then I said, if you've got a Goliath in your, in your life, whatever it might be, might be fear, might be anxiety, might be some form of addiction, could be anything. But if you've got a Goliath in your life that you really want God to deal with and you really want to get rid of that. I said, come and take a stone off here. Take a pebble off here. And so Monday morning I came in here praying, walking around like I do. And I was praying. And, I, and God said, you didn't get a pebble. I said, I know, I know I didn't. Oh, you need one. So I came over here looking now. And I picked a pebble, a nice one. No, put that back, softened it back. And I picked another one. Oh, this is a nice one. Oh, this one, mine. No, put that back. Put that back. Okay, well, which one? The biggest one you can find. <laughs> he said, pick the biggest pebble you can find. Put it in your pocket. And do not take it out of your pocket. No, it's there. And tell that Goliath that you did defeat him. And we know, you and I, Peter, which one, what it is. He said, and every time that Goliath, whatever it might, that anxiousness, if it's yours, if it's anxious, if it's, I don't know, if it's you can't stop drinking, if it's you're struggling with drugs, whatever it might be, a smoking, or anything, whenever that desire comes, just feel that pebble in your pocket and know that I'm with you and we'll defeat this Goliath. And, and that's how God spoke to me. And so, it, for me, it was a crossing over, you know? It was like crossing over from, I didn't know how I could get rid of this Goliath that has plagued me for too many years. I didn't know how I could overcome it because I keep just falling. And I keep just thinking, Lord, I'm sorry. And every time I do, I feel pretty rubbish. I don't know if you have ever had that experience, but that's my life. And God says, come on, we're going to deal with this. So I've got the pebble in my pocket. I'm going to be totally, totally honest, right? It is a battle for me. I battle with things as well, just like you do. We all have battles. And until we start to be honest, and start to be honest with ourselves, but more importantly to know that God knows and He wants us to be honest because He will. He will defeat your Goliath Amen. for you. He yeah. will. Yeah. And that's how I was. And so... I've got my pebble in my pocket. 
And I just put my hand in everything. And, and it's in the way. It's like I put my phone in there. It's in the way. And I, get, I put it in the way on purpose. Because it gets, you know, to, just to make... And every time I do it, I think, wow. God's with me. And it works for me. And then I'm driving home today. Earlier on today, where I'm driving today, I was thinking about this. And I thought, I've got my pebble here. And then I thought, it's almost like a good luck charm. But it's not a rabbit's foot. And it's not a cross round my neck. This is something that God's done. It's something different. Yes. And, and what I didn't touch on on the story when the Israelites crossed into the, into the promised land is that they were each told to take 12 stones from the centre of the river. And with them 12 stones, he had to stack them up on the side of the bank. As a, it, it talks about an Ebenezer, it says. It's like a stone of help, which fits in very well, doesn't it? It's an Ebenezer. And, and when the children in the years to come say, what is that pile of stones there for? I tell them, that's where the Lord, your God, stopped the water and we crossed over into the promised land that you are now in, but we came from the wilderness. And, and when we can cross over, imagine, imagine if we can cross over into the promised land and our children, they come with us and we can teach them the same way. So they're the stones of help. So my stone, my pebble, is my stone of help for a season. Maybe until I go to heaven, who knows. It's like a little like Paul, he has a thorn in his flesh. I think I've got one of them. But I've also got a pebble in my pocket. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.